Hello again, it's me, Melanie, from Center Moreland United Methodist Church. This is our virtual VBS, and today is Wednesday. Today's Bible story actually isn't a Bible story. It's taken from a part of the Bible called Proverbs, where a bunch of ancient people just kind of gave advice about how to live a good life. And uh, the section of the Proverbs we're going to look at is a section that refers specifically to animals, where ancient people looked at animals and said, hey, how can I be like that animal in a good way? And so we're going to explore the value of a couple different animals. For craft time, you're going to get to make an ant puppet and a rock badger made from a real rock. Um, and there'll be some fun and some eyeballs and some glue involved. But before we get to that, let's head over and say hi to Mark at the Knowlton Farm. Hi everyone, how are you today? Today I'm going to share with you a video of the cows in my pasture behind my house here and a calf that was dancing around with the cows. I think you'll enjoy. And one thing that that seeing this calf that you think of was uh, the story of the golden calf that's in the Bible. So today I'm going to read Exodus chapter 32, verses 19 through 26. So here we go. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it on the fire, in the fire. Then he ground it to powder scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, What did these people do to you, that you led them into such great sin? Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt. We don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control. So and so become a laughing stock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Lev Levites rallied to him. That was really interesting. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and now we're gonna talk about today's Bible story. 
Um, it's from Proverbs chapter 30 verses 24 through 28 and I'm actually going to read this one because it's super short. Um, you also have a printout of it in your packet so you can read it again uh, with your grown up um, or you can see the animated video that kind of explains it in a really fun way with kids in more detail. I put a link for that in the description below. It wasn't made by us, but it was made by some people who love God, and I think they do a really great job of explaining this portion of the Bible. So here we go. Four Small Wonders is the title of these short verses. There are four small creatures, wisest of the wise. Um, and when you call a creature wise, it's saying you're smart, it's a positive thing. And so I believe that the way they're phrasing it, they're saying you should be like these animals. Ants, frail as they are, get plenty of food in the winter. Um, and so they're talking about how you see them like gathering food all the time. They work really hard. So even though they're tiny and easy to squish, uh, they're successful in life because they're really hardworking. And so it's suggesting that you should be hardworking like the ant. Rock badgers, vulnerable as they are, manage to arrange for rock solid homes. Um, and so they're talking again about an animal that's fragile and easy to kill, but they're able to, uh, with their strength and perseverance and intelligence, build a home that can protect them out of rocks. Locusts, leaderless insects, yet they strip the field like an army regiment. Uh, you might not know what a locust is, but it looks like a grasshopper. But usually when you find a grasshopper, you only find one by itself. And locusts, they're never by themselves, even though they don't have like a king that tells them what to do. There's always like hundreds of them. And so when you get a locust near your food, that's always a really bad thing. In fact, over in other parts of the world right now, people are experiencing starvation because the locusts are killing all of their crops because they'll just eat everything up. Um, and you would think that the Bible would say locusts are evil, they're eating crops, but they're saying even though this thing is little and is harmful to people, look at what you can learn from their lesson because they accomplished something real amazing that by working together with groups of other people, they're even though they're tiny like a grasshopper, they are just able to accomplish monumental things. And so the lesson here, even though we don't want locusts in our backyard, is that by working together as a team, you can accomplish a lot. Um, and lizards, easy enough to catch, but they sneak past vigilant palace guards. And so uh, if you've ever caught a lizard, you know that they're really quick and fast and they are hard to catch. Um, but they also tend to have a color that camouflages them a bit against the background. Um, so by using that camouflage, again, that's using their brain to accomplish something, they can sneak past and be hidden. Um, and so those are just examples of four animals that were in Proverbs that we can kind of learn lessons from and apply them to our life. Um, it's an interesting story from the Bible, one of many, as you know. And I think um, what we can learn about all four of them collectively is that if we observe nature, we can see that in just this world, God has planted lessons for us to learn. These animals, the tiny ones that are yucky like bugs and are scary, um, they have things to teach us about uh, what it is to live a good life, to be hardworking, to use our brains to accomplish things that maybe people think we can't, even though we're kids. Um, now we're going to head over to Craft Time with Rebecca, and she's going to help you make an ant puppet and a rock badger. Um, so have fun, and I'll see you in a little bit. finish cutting you're going to do your back middle and front pieces and then also the bottom so what you're going to do is make three loops with each of your parts and then either tape them or glue them I'm using tape but if you want to use glue you can use glue
And once you have made your three loops, you are going to glue them to the bottom strip. And then let that dry. While you are waiting for your glue to dry, we're going to fold the legs and antenna. So starting with the antenna, you want to fold about an inch or so up so it will attach to your ant. So once you fold those, the legs you're going to fold on the dotted lines. You should have two longer legs and two shorter legs for each side. So now you can attach your antenna to the front of the ant. and then fold them. Next step is to flip your ant over and we're going to attach the legs. Now the legs are kind of tricky, so they should be folded like this and you're going to attach this top fold to the ant. Once your legs are on, you're going to attach your popsicle stick 
and leave a little hanging out the back so you can grip it. Flip your ant over and give him some eyes. And a fun face. And there is your ant. Thanks again, Rebecca. Uh, those are fun keepers. I think I'm gonna put them on my shelf and have them forever. Um, to, to connect to today's message and to close us off, um, I have an extra challenge for you. It's more of a brain challenge, but it involves doing something too. And my challenge is for you to go outside today. Now you can't do this without your grown ups permission and they have to tell you whether you're going in the front yard or the backyard, so don't go running away without permission. But I want you to just sit down somewhere in nature and be still for like five whole minutes and listen. Can you hear birds chirping? Can you hear grasshoppers cheeping? Can you see an ant crawling across a leaf? Just kind of observe nature in real life. Look up even. Have the leaves started changing? and Whenever you notice something, whether it's a plant or an animal, maybe think about what lesson is God trying to teach me with that plant or with that animal. I hope you enjoy your time outside. I hope you're having a great week and a great day. I know some of you are going back to school tomorrow, so I wish you luck most certainly, and I uh, plan to see you tomorrow back again here on Thursday.